contract room, Jacqueline McCormick, coming in from California. <laughs> tight schedule here because uh, Lincoln Hospital is very good to us getting this auditorium uh, at last uh, minute almost so uh, I'm going to ask the, uh, the speakers to be brief but the, the, the next speaker is the uh, well it's been over a year now but he certainly revitalized our local in the New York Ventura Postal Union it's a large part of the reason that we're involved in all the stuff that we're doing now and I'd like to have him come up and say a few words to introduce to you the president of the New York Metro Area Postal Union of the APW, Jonathan Smith. Looks like I got two minutes before I can say good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you, Jack, so much. Um, we realize that our most powerful tool is information. And as we get more information, we get the tools that we need to fight this battle. Um, probably a lot of you, before you came here today, maybe you did not realize the seriousness of our struggle. But when we look at the Bronx GPO and we compare it to a lot of these other post offices that's, all, uh, that's closing, do we think we're any different now? The post office is very serious. And, um, I wrote down a few thoughts when I was coming up here that I want to share with you real quick because I want to bring um, some of our distinguished guests up to the podium. But um, as you realize, there was not a lot of politicians invited to this event. Why? Because um, this event is not about the flashy speeches. This event is not about people getting elected. This is about correcting a bad situation. And, and what, what made me so sad is when we were out there the other week with the um, fast food workers, we heard all these beautiful speeches, beautiful speeches. But what we're about is action. Talk is cheap. Yeah. And the message that we want to give out, if New York Metro throws an event, and we hope that the rest of labor will recognize this, that if you politicians want to get to this podium, you have to earn the right. And it's going to take more than speeches to do that. Now I want to talk to you about what's really upsetting me because as you, many of you know that have heard me speak before, that I get up here and I tell you how mad I am, but I'm still mad. I'm angry. I'm angry at the lies because what they're trying to do is they're trying to destroy the post office on a bunch of lies. And they're trying to blame the blame game. And the blame game is blame the economy. Blame the Republicans, blame the Democrats. But then it comes down to blame the workers and blame the community. They want to do anything but take responsibility for action that they took that caused this mess in the first place. Well, we need to hold them accountable. And how do we hold them accountable? We hold them accountable at the voter's box. Right. Martin Luther King said the most important step that you could ever take is those few steps to the election box. I'm ready to take it. I'm ready to make the changes that's necessary. I'm ready to support those that walk the walk and not talk the talk. If you look in New York Metro's magazine, we have taken a position of leadership. We have given our members an idea of who to vote for, not only within our local, but within our community. It's time for the people to take the community back and let the politicians know who they work for. See, the thing about it is they are good at lies. Because the first lies, they told you about weapons of mass destruction. Have you found any of them? <laughs> they, told you, uh, they told you the lie about uh, Obamacare is no good. Death camps. Do you really believe that? Because the sad thing about it is every congressman got lifetime health insurance as soon as he went. Why can't we have the right to the same thing that they have? What happened to we the people? They told you Social Security has got to go. It's killing this country. These are the lies that they keep promulgating day in and day out. I can remember the ultimate lie. When one politician was complaining about another politician being a citizen and said, show me your birth certificate. And then he said, well, show me your income tax statement. He said, I can't do that. <laughs> See, the thing about it is they hide behind the lies because we are not holding them accountable. 
See, as a labor organization, we have to take our rightful right in the community. We have to take our community back. See, the thing about it is, they don't talk about the real story. See, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, when anthrax hit, the mail got through. When Sandy hit, the mail got through. No matter what calamity came, the postal worker was there and was proud to be there. <laughs> Unlike these politicians, we hold to our creed. And our creed is simply, we deliver. We deliver. And we have to keep delivering. But we have to deliver on the promise that we made to the community. This is not a battle about the postal worker's job. This is a battle about the senior citizen that needs some place to go to get their medicine. This is a battle about the small business worker that can't compete with these large conglomerates. This is a battle about what we deserve because unfortunately, it seems like a lot of these post offices that are closing are in the poorest community. I don't think that's by accident. What they're trying to say to us is we don't count. Well, I'm here to tell you that as a labor organization, we have to take back our responsibility. When they attack our contract, we fight. When they attack our wages, we fight. When they attack our post office, we fight. When they attack our community, we fight. No longer can we sit back and talk mad. Now it's time to be mad. And how do you show that you're mad? We have to get out in the streets. We have to let the public know and change the conversation. We have to reframe the issue to let the people know, hey, they're trying to take away a service that not only you earn, but you deserve. See, no, no time in the argument has it ever come up. Do we deliver? Yes, we do. Do we deliver? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Do we deliver? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Well, we have to deliver more than mail now. We have to deliver our bodies in front of these post offices. We have to deliver on the on election line. We have to deliver on the phone calls to these politicians to tell them that if they don't change, something will change. I promise you that. Why? Because we deliver. I just want to have a conversation with you. And the conversation I want to have with you, because this is not about making speeches, the conversation that I want to have with you is, when is enough going to be enough? When are you going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired? I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to go to war. Because the thing about it is, when Donald Hoe decided that he was going to go to Congress and decide that he was going to break our no layoff law, when they sat up there and they had told the American people that the Postal Service was in dire trouble because of UPS, FedEx, email, and all these lies they tried to tell the people. What they did was not give a message, but what they did was declare war. It's war. It's time to go to war. The battle is on. The veterans were promised a job. We were promised a decent way to make a living. Everybody is not able to go to college. And they need a decent way to make a living and to raise a family. And I can tell you that is not a dream, because my grandfather was a postal worker. And I'm standing here because of him. <laughs> so if you're ready, let's go. When we leave here, let's make this the first march of many marches. Let's get our money together, pull our money together to help the legal cause. Let's go to battle for more than our talk. It's time to walk the walk. I'm tired and I'm mad. I'm fired up and I'm ready. I can't take it anymore. I'm fired up. Can't take it anymore. I'm fired up. Can't take it anymore. Let's go to war. You Thank you. That was uh, President Jonathan Smith of New York Metro. Well, we're